Okay, you can just send me Hello. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Everything is working. I'm getting you. <laughs> I think we don't need a long weekend again. I'm over long weekends. <laughs> this is what happens if we get long weekends. <laughs> It's like everything just doesn't fall into place. It's a long weekend, and then we can cram it into four days. It just literally doesn't work. <laughs> you need a weekend to recover. Weekend because a long weekend is just too busy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on our live today and accepting the invitation. I really appreciate you coming on, and I just wanted to. Um, Connect with you. You're one of my other favorite people. I know I tell everybody on the come on my live, they're my favorite people. But I have a, you know, the, the ones that say I have a, a big heart and a lot of friends. But I cram everybody in my, <laughs> and everybody in my heart is like my favorite person. So, yes. so I'm just going to open up in prayer. And then we will um, start um, with our topic for this evening, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And I thank you, Father God, for coming together with us. I invite the Holy Spirit into this time with Andile as we dive into a very sensitive topic tonight, um, which we have somehow taken lightly, but it is very important that we, we speak about it. And I thank you, Father God, that we have prepared and we have come together, Father God, to just share our hearts, share the word and have this conversation and i just thank you father god for your will your work and your love that is going to come through tonight in the mighty name of jesus thank you for those that are going to be joining this live and hearing may have some great impact father god and i pray that some people can be restored as our topic for um our subject lord for this year in 2021 it is coming full circle so we just want everything to come full circle this year we want our singles to be healed whole and free this year and we can connect with you and just come to be beautiful and better people in this season in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen amen, amen. Thank you so much. So um, for those who don't know um, Angela Marcoma, he is from East London. I'm from East London, you know that. So most of my people that I've been sharing come from that beautiful province of the Eastern Cape. How I met all Angela, it was from uh, our beautiful home church in East London, the Uluisa community, and he has this amazing gift that I'm like, oh my word, I would love to have, but I am so grateful to be surrounded by some amazing people who have the gift of worship. When he sings, I'm telling you, I want to be there when heaven comes. <laughs> Like just to to be there when the, when the worship teams come alive and we just worship. So um, he's an amazing worship leader. And if anybody wants to book him that is not from the Eastern Cape, find him on Facebook and just book him. He really makes the place come alive. He is gifted. He is um, a father. He's a husband. He's an amazing friend and also a brother. And I'm grateful to be um, a part of his journey and to just connect with him um, as a friend. So that is who Andile is. And then for those who don't know me and are new in this group because they came to see um, Andile, um, I am Harmony. I am the group leader of Single Talk uh, South Africa. And it's been um, an amazing year that has come by. 
and we are just loving the circle of people that come on to just share and empower and grow together and we pray together. So our, t- our topic for this week, let's just go into our topic for, actually not even this week, this month, it is um, overcoming the fear of vulnerability. So how this came about is that uh, we had a number of suicides happening in our country. And I felt that we should just bring this to the table. Is this a thing that we are scared of? Are we scared to talk? Are we scared to connect? Are we just scared to even say, I need help? Or even in prayer, do you say, are you scared to say, I need help. God help me. Holy Spirit help me. And it starts with being vulnerable, with being vulnerable with yourself and um, being vulnerable with God and also with the people around you. Um, Last year, Angela, our subject was establishing healthy relationships. Okay. And that meant your relationship with yourself, a relationship with God, a relationship with your family relationship with your friends and then uh, colleagues that be people of the church, people that you work with. So those are five relationships that we are in connection with. And out of these relationships, this is where we need to find moments to be vulnerable with those people. You know, can I be vulnerable with God and tell him, God, I need your help. Can I be authentic with myself and say, Hams, you need help. You know, this is beyond you. And then speak to a family member, speak to your spouse, or speak to a friend, you know. And um, that's how I just like felt we should just come and have this conversation. And so I just wanted to hear from you what um what your thoughts are about what's been happening in our in our country. It's not even in our country, but it just hit home for us. Um, it's been happening for years, it's been happening all over the world, suicide is not something new, but the way it hit this year, for a lot of us, it, it, it hit really hard, and it affected the entertainment industry, it hit families, and yeah, let's just have that conversation. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been really hectic, it's been really hectic, and I, and I think um, the past two years have been really tough on people. Um, I, I think we walked into something we did not know. You know, um, when when there was an announcement of uh, the first hard lockdown, everyone didn't know what to expect. You know, and so we walk into this thing not knowing when we are going to get out of this thing, how this thing looks like. Um, how we're going to manage this thing. We don't even know how we're going to manage this thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, what what had happened was that uh, before, for a lot of people, maybe they, they could um, go out to sort of <clears throat> um, not really, to, to run away from being vulnerable to people. Or they they will get busy with things. But in that hard lockdown, it forced everyone to confront the very people they ran away from, mm-hmm. you know? And for some, it was a blessing. And for some, it made matters worse, you know? And so we are finding that people are, are now having to deal, have, having to confront everything that is going on inside of them and they have nowhere to debrief and so because they have nowhere to debrief they they are stuck in their own thoughts and everything is just going it's just like uh, it's, it's like a, a a thousand voices just all going off at once you know and people even are were forgetting that oh i can pray to god god can listen to me God can hear me, you know? But I think the one thing about that is that um, God does not say what we want. He mm. says what we need. 
you know and so when when so people were also running away from god because they did not want to hear what god was going to say because they knew it was not going to be uh, uh, aligned with what they wanted you know even though it was going to help them you know so people were trying to then do what they did before lockdown which is to run away but there was nowhere to run to <laughs> you know so you then found um people were too stuck in their own thoughts and then people were like uh, and so i think the, the the suicide then um wave comes where people are just wanting to silence the noise you know so and i think this is where we are at now people are wanting to silence the noise instead of um even deeper so that they can get to the root uh, of where the noise is coming from and deal with that yeah that i mean you touched on something we were all still in uh COVID is still there uh just yesterday i think the president announced that the country is open we you know all those little um rules have now been you know some of them have been taken away some of them have been reduced and then it's just you know everybody seems very free i was i was in the mall today and uh we're all wearing our masks because we're inside but i've gotten used to the social distance and now you're finding people are standing a little bit closer and i'm like hey remember we still have to do social distancing remember or you know like your half a meter or a meter away can you please keep that and it's, it's not even about the fact that we we're still in covid it's that something we've been we're like already succumbed to and that's where we're at now that there must be that that, that social distance and i think it's also going to be one of our downfalls later because then we're going to keep people there and yes. when they are further than arm's length we're going to be like no no don't come too close i know um i'm in this space but you don't need to come too close so i'm okay and then it makes it also difficult because now when they're there how do you say i need help come and you know help me so yeah. i even read up on the, on the subject of, of of vulnerability i mean the dictionary comes up and says that you know it's it's like something that you're scared it's like being scared of the unknown like somebody can talk to you wanting to talk to you and all you're thinking is something negative is going to be said you know like if you're being attacked or um yeah, yeah. something negative is going to say no one is going to believe you and so I think that's what people are really scared of. I and mean, we need to overcome that because, yes, therapy is, is expensive, okay? We can advocate saying, please go to therapy, see this one, mental health um, situations, let's go to therapy. But one of the biggest excuses people have is that therapy is expensive. So, um, then you go to FAMSA, but that is for someone free. And people are so scared to open up and go talk to somebody because of fear of being judged or this, there's no solution to this thing. And uh, I remember how a few weeks ago when you read that uh, the Bible verse, the one that said, um, come to me all those who are um, burdened and, you know, God will ease the, your yoke. I mean, I'm paraphrasing the, the verse now, but it really resonated where we are, God has given that opportunity. He's saying, I'm your, your counselor, I'm your therapist, I'm your friend, I'm the one you can speak to me. Bring your worries, your, um, your thoughts to me. Bring your concerns to me. Bring your hurts to me. And I'll make the load much easier for you. And I, um, yeah, it's just been really tough. And I really want I like people to come to, to that point. So we don't say, I wish they spoke to me. Um, you know, let's, let's just dive into that. And in, in what has God, what has God, you know, done in your life when you're able to say, I'm overcoming a little bit of, of, of vulnerability 
And yes, it's not something that we you can do overnight. Where you can speak to your wife and say, you know what, I feel less than a man because of this, you know, or tell your 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 parents that you know what, I'm feeling less than a son because I'm you know, I don't have a job and I can't provide for my family. You know, that kind of, of vulnerability that you want to, you know, how has God helped you in your life where you can, you know, can speak to people, speak to your people that are much closer to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think before I get there, I, I just want to say that, you know, as, as the body of Christ, you know, even before COVID happened or whatever the case may be, there was um you know a great what shall i say the 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 the, the, the there's a great mis- uh, 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 problem that we had as the body of christ where where people were feeling like they were not safe to speak about the issues in the church because if they find someone that they feel that they can trust. They will speak to the someone and pour their heart out, and then they will hear someone else talking about their problems. You know, so we, we have had uh, big issues. We have big issues in the church in that we are not trustworthy. We are not faithful with the things of people. And so people have then had to, um, hold on to their things because they cannot offload anything. Wow. You know, um, that has been a major problem, you know, in, in the body of Christ. Um, but, but yeah, but I mean, look, for, for me, um, I've, I've, I've had to, you know, you know me, whenever I, uh, I come, I'm with people, I'm always smiling. I want to make everyone happy. <laughs> you know, I want to make sure that everyone is fine, even though I'm not fine. You know, um, and I think that has been my thing since I was young. You understand? Um, and and I never quite understood it. And at some point, I I was like, you know, Father, I I also want to be moody. <laughs> you know, I also would like <laughs> to not feel fine. You know. And for everybody to see it, you know, and God had to make me realize that it, it's not that I'm faking it, you know, it's just my nature. That's how I am, you know, but what God had to teach me and because of that, hey, hum, what happens is that people then it, it, it became like a, a, a boundary for me that smile because then nobody could ask me what was wrong because they're like ah everything is fine i'm sure he's okay do you understand but it became a boundary where where now at a time where i was really in need nobody could Mm -hmm. see yeah you understand because uh, people hadn't gotten used to the to asking me about what's are, are you really fine? What's going on? I didn't know yes. how to. Hey, help me! Hey, uh, I'm drowning. Uh, my yeah. heart's breaking over here. I don't know how to. You understand? Because the few yeah. times I did, I felt like because people had placed me on a pedestal of sorts, they they were like, oh, can't deal with this. Ah, bye. <laughs> Do you understand? And so, <laughs> yes. I, yeah. And so then I learned to, to then deal with my own things, you know, which is not good. Which is yes. really not good. So over over the years, then, um, as 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 a young Christian, you know, I had to, God had to teach me, to guide me to show me people that, mm. that I can offer. And, yes. and, and because, um, be, because some things 
are too heavy for some and some things are too heavy for others. I've, I've had to, God had to teach me about, okay, this you can offload here. This you can talk to this person about, you know, so that at least people are, are able to handle some of the things that, that, that I'm talking to, you understand? Yes. Um, but, but yeah, thank God for my wife. You know, um, that's who I offload uh, a, a lot of things to now, you know. But in my time, before I got married, um, I really had to rely on God a lot. Because, mm. because, of, because I've, been, I've been hurt, because people then go around speaking about your own things. I had to rely on God to mm. lead me to people who were going to be able to listen to me, you know, yes. the way he listened to me. So um, I had to break out of that, you know, even though I have a smile. And sometimes you come to a person and I can talk to you about my issue, né? but my, my face won't show it <laughs> that I have this issue. So sometimes mm -hmm. people think that ah, he's probably joking. So it takes a certain kind of person to be able to, to, to hear me and really hear me, you understand? And I had to learn that um, I, I am not for everyone. Not everyone is going to understand me, you understand? And yet, yet I think I'm that person who understands everyone. So I'm like, why is everyone not understanding me? <laughs> you know, I'm a simple person, you know? Um, yes. and, and I had to learn every time, every time I had to go beyond my hurt and, and say, it's like, it's like going to, to the, to the doctor, you understand? Just, just because it's going to put a drip on you, which is going to be painful. Um, it doesn't mean you're not going to go to the doctor. You yes. still need to go so that you can get healed. Do you understand? Um, just because he's going, you're going to be put under the knife for surgery, um, you, you, you're not going to say, oh, I'm not going to go because it's painful. No, you're going to go because you need to get well. Do you understand? And so it's the same for us, you know, just because you've been hurt previously um, because someone uh, couldn't hold on to what, they, what you told them, you still have to go and offload somewhere. You know, in the in the word of God, in the word of God, it, it is there. It's in Galatians chapter six. It's in the in the book of Ephesians, I think, in the book of Philippians. In the book of Philippians chapter four, verse six, it says, "Be anxious about nothing, but in everything pray, pray." Yes. You understand? Yes. So if yes. if you if you are in your fields about something and you don't see how you can get out of that. You pray, and then God gives you a way out. It's like, okay, speak to this person, or no, speak to this person, or, or okay, just wait a bit. I will, someone will come. So we need to trust God, um, even with the, the 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 broken parts of ourselves. We always want to trust God with the good parts, but we need to trust God with everything. Wow, that was a lot of nuggets it's like so much and i can resonate with just what you're saying and having to rely on god because people hurt you when they share what you think is so like your deepest hurt even your deepest joy you know people will go on and say hey have you heard how many is going through this, you know, because we all think we're friends because we come from the same, from the same church, let's say, from the same church or the same workspace or the same um, social, um, social group. And we think, okay, we, you know, if he's telling me, he's obviously telling the next person, but actually yeah. when he speaks to you, He's only just speaking to you and not because if you really wanted to tell the group, you would have called up a meeting and say, hey, let's have a family meeting and discuss what I'm going through. And 
I need help. But we don't do that. We find somebody who we can re relate with and we say, listen, this is what I'm going through. And it brings me back to how I, my relationship with Umam came um, when I joined Loiso and I was just this girl in the background, but I wanted to get involved until she really sat with me and she was like, you know, what is it with you? I can see there is something, but I want to know something. And we she, we had a small meeting just with two of us, and I shared, you know, who I am, where I'm from, what I'm doing, what are my dreams, what am I struggling with right now? And she was able to walk with me with a little bit of things, you know, and she can, I mean, I can do a little check-in with her and say, my, this and this is happening in, in, in life. Um, and she will then give me her, her, her advice on it and we pray on it and then she'll do her check-in. And I think those are the type of people we need in our lives. And like you said, thank God you have your wife because she became that person for you where you can offload stuff um, to her and you can talk it through, work it through, pray about it and have that check in with somebody. And those are the type of friends we need, the family members we need, and um, that type of relationship with God, because even when we go into prayer, you go into the prayer closet and you cry and you tell God everything because he sees our tears, he hears our cries, and then he does something. By doing something, he can send you a person like Mom K. Abu Hey, what is wrong with you? You know, like what is a um a friend of ours? You know, who, who visit. She once said this so profound. Was years later having walked with her, she said when she first saw me, she said, "Who's this beautiful girl who never smiles?" And I had yeah. really learned how to fake it and like just smile when somebody comes to come my way and be like, hi, Adila, you know, and I thought I was fake, but she actually could, when she saw me and spotted me, she spotted me with that, not with my fake smile, but with that yeah. straight face, or maybe putting on a fake smile, but she could see. And then she said, there were times where I saw your beautiful smile, but there were times where I saw your, your, um, you not smiling. And then you opened your mouth and you spoke and there were such lovely things that were coming, like you were speaking with grace, you were speaking with wisdom, there's so much coming out of you and you have so much love, but you hardly ever smiled, you know? And that's what, I mean, you said that you, you really learned to fake it, you know, fake it until you make it. And people just uh, think you don't have any problems and when you do come with your problem, they're like, oh, no, don't know how to handle that. Or... They, you know, maybe go speak about it with somebody else trying to help you, which is not the help that we actually need when you go and take my story and you share with somebody else thinking that, oh, I'm trying to help harmony in this situation. So you've touched on some very important points and how it's go back to saying some church hurt, you know, where you say some people in the church are not trustworthy are not faithful, you know, yeah. and it's, it, I mean, that starts with just your relationship with God. People need to get that in line because then once God can trust you with his people, then you are able yeah. to, to, to receive when they are, the, the, um, the load, when they say, I'm burdened with something, the first thing you can go is to say, not just say, oh, let's pray about it, but to have a listening ear first of all yeah. and then know how to direct that prayer because i can come and say i am having a hard time at work and my boss is doing this my team is attacking me in this way i don't know what to do at home this is what's happening with the family it's getting overwhelming what do i do as the church we try to you know come with this oh let's pray about it you know sometimes prayer is not the first thing we need it's listening to the person because when I come to you wanting to talk to you, I need somebody to listen to me. And that is how we upload is listening. And then secondly, you can give a little bit of advice 
which is in in, in your, your scope, you know, because we're all therapists and I can't vouch myself as a therapist. I am not clinically uh, licensed to be one, but I can share from my experience, from the little that I've read and the little that I know to say, hey, Angela, when you are in this situation, my friend, why don't we, you know, maybe go see a therapist? Why don't you maybe go to Uda and let and talk through with them? Because it is not in my scope or my expertise yeah. to give you advice on this. Like, yeah. um, if you were to come to me saying, hey, you know, there's this problem within, uh, you know, we're struggling like this in my family, and I can't come with you with marriage advice, but I can just be in support and listening in, so, hey, my friend, you know what, maybe it needs somebody who has walked the walk, you know, and that is married. So maybe go to a marriage counselor, go to a fundis who are married. But I will stand in prayer with you. Prayer needs to be the third thing, you know, the second or the third thing. Those those two go together for me and saying we pray together. And I just want to encourage everybody that is on this live, um, singles, um, engaged, whatever um, level in the relationship you're in, but we need to be of listening and be of little advice, but most of all strong in prayer. Those three things that is what I want to, to leave from this conversation is that it's something I do for, for my friends in all levels. I have a lot of married friends like Andile, <laughs> because I've just got lots of friends. But that is what I do for people. It doesn't matter who you are and what walk of life you're in. I am there to listen and I share what is within me. You know, there'll be it wisdom or any advice um, from any book from any YouTube or any talk or anything that I've observed is I only share that little bit. And then I come strong in prayer for people so that God can intervene and they can have the time to speak to God about this thing because he then has, he's the provider of all these people that are there to help us. He will send you to that therapist. He will provide a good therapist because we go to therapy and you may find you actually don't connect with that person and they don't know how to help you and you're spending a lot of money and this person does not know how to help you. A friend of mine said just lately that she went and found a Bible-based therapist. You know, I mean, I was just shocked. I'm like, you even prayed about that? She was like, yes, friend. And I went to God and I prayed about the therapist I go to. This person needs to not only challenge me with the word, but equip me so that when I leave the room, I go back to my Bible as a resource after our session so that they equip me with scripture. And I leave there knowing that when I'm having an anxiety attack or when I need to, to talk to somebody, I need to find the words. I seek the word, and then I get that strength to overcome any problem that I am facing. So it has been, yeah, an experience and a learning and a learning um, journey of not only just self, but who to connect with, you know, and yeah. who do I share with my my face, my journey, my life, and also putting. Trust in God, yes. For sure, and and you know, just um, I I think on on the on on this part of listening, you know, mm. <clears throat> one of the things that we, we have to understand is that when we when people when words leave your mouth, they leave with a certain spirit behind them. If all your words have a certain spirit behind them. You understand? Yeah. Um, to give you an example, someone can um, share a joke, okay? yeah. but the intent of their joke 
the spirit behind the joke is to is to hurt you so everybody else laughs but you get uh, but but you get hurt but it's a joke do you understand so the spirit mm. behind it harmony was not to make to make you laugh it was to hurt you do you understand mm. so yes. so every every that, that that proceeds from our mouth has a certain kind of spirit uh, behind it so <clears throat> this is why we have to um, we, when we listen to people when people are speaking we have to listen to the spirit behind their words because um, every time that they speak they let you know um, what it is that is going on in their heart if you listen very carefully um, yeah. so and and when you when you listen to someone you are trying to understand the what they are not saying so in order for you to understand what they are not saying you have to ask questions you have to dig that's how that's how you dig that root out you have to ask questions mm -hmm. you know so what did you do in this situation um did you mm -hmm. think about this you know so you open up their mind sort of you know because when they mm -hmm. when someone comes with the problem they come with their narrow view of what the problem is so you have to widen it a bit for them so they think a bit broadly about the problem you understand and when they start to think broadly about the problem maybe they will come up with their own solution and all you've done is just listen <laughs> you know <Yes>. um, <laughs> so 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 discernment then becomes very important when you're listening so you are not listening to respond but you are listening to understand and when you listen in that way you are able when you when you come up with a solution you are able to come up with a solution to the root of the problem not just the cream on top do you understand and and, yes. and this is this is why then 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 once you you have you have been listening to the person and digging and getting down to the root of the issue, then you are able to pray upon something. Do you understand? Yes. Now you know what you need to pray for before mm. you did it. Do you understand? Um, yes. So that's the, one. The, the other thing is that we also need to understand that we are all connected mm. we are the we are the body of christ and when and because we are the body of christ we need to know what the other's function is in the body mm -hmm. so that if someone comes to me with an issue that i cannot handle i know where to take them to so that yeah. they may receive what they need to receive Mm -hmm. Do you understand? If, if, yeah. if we are in our own bubble and we don't, we are not connected with one another, there, there's this whole thing, the world is driving us towards this thinking of independence. No man is an island. Yes, you know, Adam, we, we Adam does not want to be alone, yes. No, you can't. You you can't. The, in, in as much as you can say you are a loner, or I enjoy my own company, or whatever, there is a level of con of, of connectedness that you have with different people in order for you to function. You know, in order for you to function, yes. there is a level of connectedness that you have with other people. So we are codependent. We are not independent people you understand and this this idea of independence has crept into the church so much that we are unable to function the way christ intended for us to function because yeah. we are so consumed with ourselves. we are so consumed with ourselves 
and and that's the other thing that 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 takes you that 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 takes you to a, to the place of vulnerability when you step out of yourself and you step into you pray about someone else yes you've got your issues you've got you've got your problems you understand but pray about someone else let god show you um how to walk in someone else's shoes for a moment and and once once you do that you begin to understand that in the bigger scheme of things uh my problem is not that big you know um and so you begin to see your problem in context because when when you are consumed with self this problem looks bigger than it is yes and you you tackle it as if it's a giant but as if it's a mountain but it's a molehill you know so we need to we we, we need to understand that we we can never we can never stop connecting with each other we can never stop connecting with god so we, at some point at at any given point in time in our lives we remain open to someone and we need to pray to god that whoever it is that we open to or that we connect to that it is that person that god wants us to walk with the book of amos chapter 3 says can two people walk together if they have not agreed mm. you know so even before the journey begins there is a level of agreement that has happened for you to be able to walk in this journey um you have to decide are we going in the same direction you know uh, how fast are we walking you know map out the route that you are walking and as you begin to walk with this person at some point you get to uh crossroads in the journey and this person decides you know i want to go left and the other person decides i want to go right and that's okay you agree to separate and off you go yes. and i think that's how life should be but we are so consumed with self that when we get to the crossroads and someone else's journey takes them left and yours is going right it's either one of two things happen is that this one other person has to forfeit their own journey to go with you or you forfeit your own journey to go with someone else and yet it's okay if if the if if the destination takes you to different places at some point in the journey that 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 is okay to be okay we get so offended as 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 people you know by things we should not be offended by you know yeah. and and this creates these barriers and these walls that makes us less vulnerable to the next person that we need to walk wow like we sit thinking about these things and we watch them happen daily but until we have the conversation one like this it literally opens up you know and like you said you need to not just see it this way but make the the road a bit wider and ask the questions and have the conversation and then you can see that maybe my situation is not that rough and um it may look big to me but our bed is actually not that big and there are other people having this type of problem and we just need to we're all just looking for a solution and we just don't know where to find it and we're knocking on so many doors and it's either somebody who answers is not giving us a solution they actually making the problem worse or the person who's giving us a solution it's a short term solution not a long term solution and that is where um people end up in like being depressed so they not knowing what to do and it leads them to all these mental health issues and then people to in their lives so yeah. i'm just like so can, going to... can i just say on 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 that part um the the jesus is the answer ne right? for everything so in 
in in a in, in any mental state the foundation of it all is not having an answer to anything mm. when you're unable to answer something then it it leaves your mind it, it keeps your mind in limbo do you understand and mm. if we understand that at the foundation of it all that jesus is the answer mm. you know he has the solution whatever question he is the answer then we begin to find a sense of peace within our minds about certain yes. things that even if we don't know what is going to happen we are assured of this one fact that jesus is the answer and he Amen. he will answer me sometimes sometimes the answer sometimes you will ask god a question or you pour out your heart and he will just not answer you in the moment he will answer you eventually but he just needs you to be at a certain place to you for you to be able to receive that answer you know um i'm just reminded now that that we're talking about um you know depression and all of that yeah awesome thank you so much it's been um a great conversation i would love to do another one of these and we can just dive in because we touched on some some key points there that i'd love to expand the conversation further with you so we're definitely going to have Angela back <laughs> um, on our live because he's been, you know, he's full of wisdom, full of like, you know, stuff that that needs to just, you know, conversations need to go going. So thank you so much, Angela, for sharing and having this conversation with us. The point that I'm the, uh, taking from you is, you know, the discernment is one of them. You know, when you, when you pray. It is praying for that discernment and, and, and trusting God that, you know, he will bring the answer to you. And it could be not in the moment, but it could be a person a day later, a couple of months later, not even months later, but like a day later or a week later. But that answer will come. And we need to, you know, have people around in our in our space that we can share with. And in this group, we have singles. So it's people who, who have friends and families and maybe have a significant other, you know, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or um, uh, somebody that they're engaged to. So it's those, things, those people that they can tap into. And guys, I just want to encourage you that in your relationship that you have, especially being your relationship with God and the relationship with yourself. You need to start with those and praying with God and speaking to yourself, you know, first is how am I feeling? You know, um, I, I love doing affirmations and firstly I check myself and I say, you know, do the good morning ritual. I do a good night ritual. I just check myself and I ask, how many, how are you feeling? And I call it a thing, I call it what it is. Today I'm not feeling well, and this is what it is, and I check myself. Before I go and I speak to anybody about it and say, hey, friend, this is how I'm feeling, or hi, mom, I'm not feeling this way. I'm not feeling good today, because you know when you pick up your phone in the morning, it's, you're going to get that special message from your person or from a family member, hi, how are you? And sometimes we're not always honest. We just hide behind, I'm fine, I'm blessed, um, God is good all the time. And do you ask or are you actually going through something? So once you start with yourself and you can say, Hans, how are you today? And you can say, you know what, today I'm not feeling well. I'm feeling a little bit sad or I'm feeling, you know, out of place. And then you can channel it and say, God, who do I speak to? Or God, this is how I'm feeling. And then you know, it will all connect and, you know, help will come. God will send. And when you chat to that one person by discernment, they will say what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And I have, yeah, it's been a great conversation. I will 
put in the nuggets in the group, guys. It's been amazing with Andy and I will definitely bring him on. He's been a pleasure to have in the group and just to share with him. Thank you so much. And thank you to the family for giving you some some free time to, to, to have on to have you with us tonight. Thank you, Tobs, and to the little ones. And I pray that you have a great week further and an amazing 2022. And I just want to ask that you close up in prayer and then we will end off our live tonight. Awesome. Okay, shall we pray? Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, O oh God. Lord, we have built so many walls around us, Heavenly Father, that we are even unable to access ourselves. Mighty God, we pray, Mighty God, that you may teach us to break down those walls. Heavenly Father, we treat you, Mighty God, as well, like a human being. Heavenly Father, yet you are God who knows all, who sees all. There's nothing, Mighty God, that, that, that passes you. Oh God, you are not you are not like man. You never lie, Heavenly Father. So uh, so we should allow ourselves to be vulnerable with you. We should uh, uh, just um, put down our guard with you, Oh God, and tell you everything that is in our hearts, Heavenly Father. To just empty out our hearts, Heavenly Father, like a drink offering before you, Heavenly Father, because you hold all the answers, Oh God. We don't know anything, Heavenly Father. You are the only one in the entire universe, Heavenly Father, who is able to see the past, the present, and the future at the same time. Can we not trust you then, Heavenly Father? For you see everything in perspective. We only see the present, mighty God. We have experienced the past. We see the present, and we don't know what the future holds. But you see everything all at once. Can we then not trust you, O oh God, with our lives? Can we not trust you with our inner thoughts, Heavenly Father? Can we not trust, Heavenly Father, that you are able to keep our secrets, Heavenly Father? Of course we can, mighty God. For you are a faithful God. You are trustworthy, mighty God. You have never let us down, not ever, Heavenly Father. Yes, we may feel that we have not gotten the things that we want in the time that we wanted it, but you, God, you know better than us. Your thoughts are higher than ours. Your ways are higher than our ways. And we trust you completely. We lay down ourselves before you mighty God right now so in, 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 in total surrender Heavenly Father that you may get all the glory from our lives we give you all the glory we give you all the honor in Jesus Christ's name Amen Amen wow thank you very much Andile thank you so much for the prayer and may you have a blessed evening and the rest of the week and we will meet soon Awesome. Definitely looking forward to it. Thank you. Good night. Good night.